Hello friends, in this video talk, we'll discuss uh, a few questions concerning the clap pattern, you know, in GK. Now, as you know, the clap GK pattern has changed this year. Traditionally, there has been this model of having a question followed by a set of choices, uh, which is basically the classic Q&A model. Now, this year, what they have done is they kind of have uh, talked of having a passage followed by a set of questions. Now, the questions could relate to the theme of the passage or, you know, uh, I mean, there are a couple of things here. One, when you say theme of the passage, the questions could be, some of the questions could be answered, you know, by eliciting information from the passage itself, while some could be answered by, you know, bringing your understanding, your knowledge of the world around. You know, it's, it's, general knowledge is not a great comfort area for most of us. So, so what we would do, we could do is to, of course, read extensively. And the best way to learn is to read while when we say read, again, there are a couple of problems we face. One is uh, that we kind of, uh, you know, uh, don't understand everything. And two, we don't remember everything. But these things could be taken care of. Like when we read, we know that we don't understand everything and we don't remember everything. So we let's budget for these couple of things. So start reading. As we start reading, there are some parts we understand, some parts we don't understand because as we know, the degree of comfort changes between subjects. And of course, you know, there is a subject A where your comfort level is 90%, you understand, you remember much better. Uh, then there is a subject B where your comfort level isn't well not as great as it is with a so let's look at uh, you know it's let's say 70 percent so it comfort level varies between subjects but let's spend time on reading and of those 10 15 minutes that we spend today you would find that we may not have while we may not have understood everything and we may not recall everything we still would have got some basic idea this is the way you know this is a way to learn having a basic familiarity having a basic understanding of what's happening around is pretty important you know to, to to make a career you know in in law and of course in every other line of activity that you choose so in this session of course we'll look at um, a few you know questions we'll try and take as much notes as possible in the first couple of slides i've put notes on the slides but as we go as we go forward we would not have much on the slides except the question itself so i would want you to write, have a pen and a paper have a pen uh, you know and a book uh, so that you could write down stuff you know it's difficult uh, you know to replicate an actual classroom environment uh, because a classroom environment is one to many where you could interact with me but here you really can't do that but we'll try to make it as possible you know as comfortable as possible because at time we don't really look at believe in gimmickry we don't really look at you know having great um, you know what to say works because we believe that substance our learning our, the quality of learning that we impart to you is the most important driver here so let's look at the first question what does it read like with which company has the ministry of women and child development recently partnered to boost digital literacy in india of course as you would know the answer is facebook the answer is important, but not as, you know, equally important would be to discuss the, you know, the choices as well as uh, some part of the question itself. Now, uh, you know that the Ministry of uh, Women and Child Development, you know, is uh, uh, headed by Smriti Irani. Smriti Irani. Now, you also know that she is the Lok Sabha MP from, uh, she is the Lok Sabha MP from Amethi, which is in Uttar Pradesh. This constituency has traditionally been the stronghold of uh, the you know the gandhi family uh, what about the you know a little more about here before we discuss choices of course um, we mentioned this fact a while ago and let's go forward what does this ministry do but the ministry oversees other you know ambitious schemes of the prime minister of india like beti pacha beti padao pradhan mantri matru vandana yojana so there are plenty of flagship schemes, uh, you know, of the current government uh, in power, current party in power center. And of course, as you would know that you know, we could discuss the choices as well. See, these four companies that are here are also got the big four, except for Twitter. You know, if you would sw switch uh, Twitter for, uh, you know, Microsoft, you would find them that these are the big four of the world of technology. 
So what should you know? What each of these companies, as you can see on the screen, we learn the, the place where it's headquartered and of course followed by the guy who heads the company. Amazon, my friends, as you know, is the world's largest e-commerce company. There is this dispute between uh, Alibaba.com and Amazon as to who's larger. But if we look at um, the share volume and everything, yes, it's Amazon as a single entity. Whereas Alibaba Group has a lot of other entities like Taobao, Tmall, all the AliExpress. So we are looking at a single platform. It's Amazon, my friends, the world's biggest e-commerce company. You know, this uh, company was founded by Jeff Bezos uh, in 1997 and uh, it's headquartered in a place called Seattle, which is the capital of Washington state. See, there are two major, you know, there are two major places in America named Washington. Uh, one is in the, one is the capital, as you know, Washington DC, that is. DC is District of Columbia, whereas the other Washington is uh, in Seattle, which is, I mean, it's the name of a state on the west coast of America on the border with Canada. That's where Seattle is. So the capital is on the east coast of America. You know, um, remember that America has 50 states for and one federal district. Washington is a federal district. It is not a part of any state. So technically, America has 50 states followed by one federal district. So uh, you have, uh, of course, Amazon there. You know, you should know that it's also the world's, uh, it's named after the world's largest uh, river, the volume of water. Um, of course, Amazon, my friends, um, you know, uh, was originally called Kadabra.com, C-A-D-A-B-R-A.com. Wherever, wherever necessary, I'll spell words. Uh, you know, words, sometimes when we, words are unfamiliar, names are unfamiliar, it's very difficult for us to, you know, get the spelling right, especially in this kind of video session. So I'll try and spell as many words as I can, especially the difficult ones. So we have uh, Amazon, uh, which is, uh, you know, named after the world's largest uh, river, uh, world's biggest river by volume of water. It would surprise you that 21% of all fresh water, river water, is found only in the Amazon River. And at its widest, the Amazon is about 100 kilometers wide. It's, you know, and when monsoons come in that part of the world, you know, uh, sometimes the rivers widens to 160 km and so there is a distance of 160 kilometers between two coasts of the river and you know this entire river stretch has had no bridge not because it's difficult to break but because most of the communities that live here have used water navigation as a means of transport now um, you know you have this company called facebook facebook my friends is uh, the world's largest uh, social networking company this company is uh, you know uh, you would find that this company is, has more members more number of members than any other social networking site in fact so big is the company that uh, if it were a separate country it would be the third most populous country in the world Active, I'm talking of active members. Okay, Facebook has about 1.1 1 .1, uh, 110 crore active members, my friends. That would make it the third most populous in the world after China and India. Where is it headquartered? It's headquartered in a place called Menlo Park, which is in California. CA is California. It's a state in the US, my friends, on the west coast. Menlo Park is a part of what is called the Silicon Valley. Now, what's the Silicon Valley? Silicon Valley is a triangulated area, um, you know, uh, triangulated by uh, the cities of uh, San Jose, uh, Santa Clara, and of course, uh, you know, uh, Palo Alto, that region basically. So, you would find that, um, you know, this name comes from two different things. One is valley, valley is ge geographical because it's a valley, it's a red valley. Uh, and of course, um, silicon is the primary, you know, uh, raw material that goes into manufacturing of computer accessories, computers and computer accessories. So back in those days, you know, that's how it was named, my friends. San Diego, San Jose and Santa Clara, sometimes Palo Alto is thrown in and that makes a triangular area, in, you know, which is called San, uh, you know, Silicon Valley. It's headed by uh, Mark Zuckerberg, he, who along with about, you know, four others had founded the company. 
um, if you would be greatly interested in knowing about how this company, you know, started and what kind of, you know, what kind of intrigue happened, you should watch this movie called The Social Network. It's a fast-paced movie. It's one of the finest movies you would ever see, in the, you know, on any subject in the world of business. So then there is this company called Google, which is everywhere. Of course, just about everywhere. It's a verb now. Um, see, Google is a part of uh, a company called Alphabet. Alphabet is a parent company, the holding company, which owns Google. Uh, this company, Google, was started by two major, uh, two guys. One is Sergey Brin, the other is Larry Page. Sergey Brin and Larry Page, uh, you know, started the company as uh, Google as a search engine company. But slowly over the years, they built a large empire, tech empire, and today. Uh, Google is a part of is a subsidiary of a very big company called Alphabet. Um, you know, Google's head office is in Mountain View, California, where is uh, where the CEO Sundar Pichai also doubles up as the CEO of Alphabet. Just remember, Sundar Pichai or Sundar Rajan Pichai is the CEO of both Google and Alphabet companies. And the founders of Google are Larry Page, P A G E Page, and Sergey S E R G E Y Sergey Brin B R I N Brin. So that's Google for you, my friends. And of course, um, as a bad joke goes, if you don't know what Google, just Google Google. So uh, then we have, um, you know, we have Twitter. So now let's look at Twitter. As you know, Twitter is also called the SMS of the Internet. This company was founded by. Group of people who you know, uh, you know, who, who who came up with this entire idea of having you know conveying a message in about 140 characters. Of course, now they've expanded the number, but uh, this is how it started. So it's headquartered in a place called San Francisco, which is in the American state of California. Uh, the current CEO is one of the founders, Jack Dorsey. You know, uh, if you look at the name uh, San Francisco, you'll find the last five letters of the word San Francisco as Cisco. And you now recall a company called Cisco Systems. My friends, Cisco Systems is the world's largest maker of internet gear, you know, uh, modem suitors and all. Of course, it's the ranking still change between Samsung and San Francisco uh, and uh, Cisco, but that's, you know, how Cisco has got its name. Remember, Cisco got its name from the name of the city of San Francisco. So from this question, let's go on to the second one, who is the new Prime Minister of Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka's Prime Minister, as you know, is Mahinda Rajapaksa. And if you had uh, come up with the idea of uh, Gotabaya Rajapaksa, remember, he's the president. Gotabaya and Mahinda are two brothers, and uh, between them, they run the country. And um, what you don't know about Sri Lanka? See, this question we'll discuss in quite detail. We'll look at uh, not just Sri Lanka, we'll look at the Sark nations as well. So, but you know, just to bring it back, um, I go to buy a choice three is the president, choice four, Mahinda is uh, is, the, uh, you know, is the prime minister, and choice one, Maitri Pala Sirisena is the ex president of Sri Lanka. So, what should you know about the Sark? My friend, Sark is the South Asian Association of Regional Cooperation. Okay, this is a, you know, this is, uh, well, this is an organization that caters to about eight members in the region. This was started in 1985. The idea, of course, is to promote greater economic and political regional, you know, uh, integration. And the eight members in Alphabet, in geographical order of Afghanistan, if you look at India, you know, from where you are, Afghanistan and Pakistan to its west, then we have our own country, Nepal on its shoulders, Bhutan a little far away on the shoulder, Bangladesh in the armpit, then Sri Lanka at the, at, 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 at the at bottom of the country and Maldives, which is to the, you know, to the left of the country. To the right of the country in the Indian Ocean, there's a group of islands, my friends, Maldives, and uh, you know uh, the the head office of SARC is in Kathmandu. Currently, it's headed by a Sri Lankan um, you know a bureaucrat named Isala Virakum. So that's a little about the SARC, my friends. Now we are going to discuss um, you know uh, the country. Uh, each of these members here, for you know, it's their capital, the country's capital, the leader, and of course the currency. So here is a little about each of these currencies. Is each of these, um, you know, um, let's start with Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, my friends, is um, uh, Sri Lanka is a small island in the 
in the notion, of course, um, you know, this is this is previously called Siloam. This is previously called Siloam, and um, uh, Colombo is generally seen to be the capital, but uh, because of the you know deeper a lot of high uh, greater level of congestion, what the country's administration has done is it's moved out of uh, the capital Colombo, and outside on the outskirts, that is, they have built a new capital city, Sri Jayavardhanapure Kotte. So if you write it, Colombo, it will be right. But in case there is a choice like this on in the papers, please pick this one. Okay, so Sri Jayavardhan Kotte is the capital of Sri Lanka. Uh, and we just mentioned the president is Gotabaya Rajabaksa. We mentioned the president because it's a presidential system. And of course, uh, then the currency is um, Sri Lankan rupee. Bangladesh, my friends, is uh, in an independent country uh, that became, of course, independent of Pakistan control in 1971. Between 47 and 1971, it was called East Pakistan. It's headed by Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina Wajid, and of course, the currency is Taka. Uh, Bhutan, uh, which is a very tiny country, uh, whose capital is, it's a Buddhist country. Uh, this is a uh, you know, run by it's a constitutional monarchy. Uh, you know, uh, you know the, the what's mentioned there is the prime minister's name Lote Sherry, uh, but the king's name is Jigme Sigme Namgyal Kesar Wangchu. That's a bit mouthful. Yeah, but you could just pick one of those words. Jigme is a fine word to pick. So Lote Sherry is a prime minister of this country. And this country often talks about uh, not having a GDP measure. They go by what we call, you know, the gross happiness uh, index. Uh, to each country their own, but uh, you know, uh, the well-being, the economic well-being, the prosperity, and everything in terms of money is quantified only through GDP metrics. So. Afghanistan's a uh, pretty rocky place uh, in all sense actually, geographically, politically, economically, everywhere in all senses. So this is, uh, you know, uh, this is a country of the west of India okay, with whom it shares a very short border of the POK, 114 kilometers boundary with uh, Afghanistan. Um, you know, India shares a 114 kilometer border with Afghanistan, but remember, it's a POK where that is where the Pakistan occupied Pakistanis have occupied large parts of Kashmir. So, Kabul is a capital, my friends, so it's on the banks of the river Kabul, that's what it's called. In fact, the settlement is called Kabul. The current president is Ashraf Ghani, he, he has recently been re elected, and uh, the currency is there is Afghani. You know, Afghanistan is so rocky that uh, there's this old story that goes like. Um, it said that uh, the Almighty created, uh, you know, uh, in the world and looked around, everything was fine. And then he looked back and he found that he still was left with a pile of rocks. And then he said, okay, let me create a new country. That's how he created Afghanistan, with a pile of rocks. So I know it sounds a little implausible, but then that's how the story is. Uh, Pakistan's, um, you know, um, capital is Islamabad. The uh, Imran Khan is the prime minister, and Pakistani rupee is the currency there. Nepal's, um, you know, headed by Prime Minister Krishna Prasad Sharma Oli. Krishna Prasad Sharma Oli, while the currency is Nepali rupee. Uh, Maldives, we just mentioned a while ago, is an island in the Indian Ocean. This is a very small group of islands, a set of small islands, very, very small country, but spread across 90,000 square kilometers in the, in the country, in, a, in the ocean. And um, it would, uh, you know, it would be important for you to remember that the president of this country is named Ibrahim Muhammad Sali. Okay, that's a currency in the end, Rufia. Uh, you should also know that Maldives is a lowest highest point in the country in the world its um, highest point is about two meters that's about six and a half feet my friends so among all those countries uh, among the, in the entire world it has a you know lowest highest point uh, so you know to highlight uh, the, the plight of the country especially in the, in the case of rising sea levels uh, um, in the past the president of the country had uh, had uh, you know an underwater little cabinet meeting so he was talking of you know this is what our you know country's supply would be if sea levels keep rising like this so that's why the global warming idea had come had caught fire that you know could lead to inundation of coastal areas or a lot of you know island countries as well 
So uh, from there, of course, um, you know, it would be important for us to look at other questions from here. And of course, nothing will be on the slide six except for the question, my friends. So wherever possible, I'll give you notes. Which countries recently hosted the sixth association of uh, Southeast Asian nations defense ministers meeting, my friends? It was headed by, you know, the meeting took place in Thailand. It's Thailand. So I'll bring to you a little about uh, each of these countries. But uh, importantly, uh, let's look at, uh, you know, the ASEAN. The ASEAN, my friends, uh, you could write Association of uh, Southeast Asian Nations. That's mentioned in the question itself. So we'll start with one, uh, ASEAN's full name. Two, it was started in 1967, my friends. 1967. Where is the secretary? Where is the head office of this organization? Uh, the secretariat is at Jakarta, which is the capital of Indonesia. Then, who is the head of this organization? The secretary general is a guy called Lim Jock Hoy. Lim, L I M, Lim Jock, J O C K, Jock Hoy, H O I Hoy. Lim Jock Hoy. And then, of course, um, uh, there are 10 members. It has 10 members. 10 members. Who are these members? Just look at west of, you know, the east of India. You'll find all the 10 members. You'll we'll, we'll start with Myanmar. So write Myanmar, Thailand, Laos, L-A-O-S, Laos, Cambodia, C-A-M-B-O-D-I-A, -A, Cambodia, Vietnam, V-I-E-T-N-A-M, Vietnam, You know, then we got five, then we got Malaysia in the sixth place. I'm going in the geographical order, that's it. Random order six, Malaysia, then seven, Singapore, S I N G A P O R E, Singapore, which is a tiny place at the tip of the Malaysian Peninsula. Eight, Indonesia, I N D O N E S I A, it's mentioned in choice one, Indonesia. 9. Brunei, B-R-U-N-E-I. It's a small, you know, uh, very tiny country on the island of Borneo. So, and 10. Philippines. It's mentioned in choice 4. Philippines. So, these are the 10 countries. Okay. Now, in some places, you may find ASEAN plus 3. ASEAN plus 3. So, there are 10 members of ASEAN plus other team members. What are the other team members? China, South Korea, Japan. So you just look at this South Korea, uh, China. You look at the map for where you are. Okay, this is China, South Korea, Japan. Okay, this is these are the three countries. So ASEAN plus three. Let's go a little further. In case you read something like ASEAN plus six, to the you know we have the three countries we mentioned: China, South Korea, Japan. To these three, you add India. So we start from India. So Take this around like this, South Africa, you know, sorry, uh, Japan, South Korea, China, India, and of course, you have Australia and New Zealand. Australia and New Zealand. So, there we go with this four, uh, you know, uh, what is it, the entire question actually. So, we discussed uh, all these uh, choices. But would you want to know about this, uh, the, the leaders of these countries? Let's go to that. Indonesia, my friends, is um, the capital is Jakarta. J A K A R T A. Jakarta. So, same order like, like we wrote in the previous question country followed by the capital, the leader, and the currency. Wherever necessary, we'll take these four measures. So, Indonesia, capital Jakarta, you know. Um, you know, we have uh, the president's name, Joko Widodo, Widodo, W-I-D-O-D-O, Joko Widodo, W-I-D-O-D-O, Widodo, and the currency is named Rupia, R-U-P-I-A-H, Rupia. See, uh, Sanskrit, uh, Rupia is Sanskrit because this was primarily a Buddhist and Hindu country. Uh, you know, today Indonesia is the world's largest Muslim nation, my friends. It has the highest Muslim population in the world, and importantly, you should know that it's the fourth most populous country in the world. Okay, among all nations in the world, it's the fourth most populous. 
and um, you know uh, it would help uh, to for you to know that um, uh, it's it's international airline is called Garuda while it's uh, you know uh, they are moving the capital in fact from Jakarta because the capital is sinking because of huge congestion, huge uh, what to say population and uh, of course the fact that you know you know you you, you have something like uh, uh, the geography of the region is such that the, pop, the city is sinking the capital is sinking so they are now moving looking at moving the capital to the island of Borneo now just to bring in the island of Borneo is a pretty large island in one of the four largest islands in the world. This island, uh, you know, the southern part of this island is Indonesia. In the northern part comprises Malaysia. Within Malaysian region, there is a tiny country, Brunei, B-R-U-N-E-I. We mentioned it a while ago as a member of Asia. So, um, that's a little about Indonesia, my friends. Uh, Thailand. Thailand is this Buddhist country east of India, my friends. And this is um, a constitutional monarchy. The capital is Bangkok, B A N G K O K. Bangkok. The king's name is Maha Vajira Longkong. M A H A. Maha Vajira Longkong is one name. Let's me spell it for you. V A J I R A L O N G K O R N. Maha Vajira Longkong. <coughs> Mahavaj <coughs> Mahavajira Long Kong and the Prime Minister is Prayut Chano Cha P R A Y U T Prayut Chan O Cha C H A N hyphen O hyphen C H A Prayut Chan O Cha That's the cap. Okay, so um, if you look at um, if you look at um, the currency, it's called Bhat. It's called Bhat. B a h t Bhat. B a h t Bhat. So you have um, the last one there. Philippines. Philippines is named uh, is is named after King Philip the Second of Spain, my friends. You know, uh, King Philip the Second of Spain. Philippines was ruled by Spain between 1568 and 1898. This is the reason why it's a Roman Catholic country, my friends. Spain was Roman Catholic, and wherever the Spanish went, they kind of carried faith as well. Um, so Philippines, uh, you know, was uh, run by Philippi uh, sorry, Philippines was run by Spain, and um, if you would look at uh, something like uh, something like uh, the capital Manila, M A N I L A Manila, M A N I L A Manila, then we have uh, the president's name Rodrigo Duterte. R O D R I G O Rodrigo Duterte D U T E R T E Duterte Rodrigo Duterte and the currency is named Peso P E S O Peso that's Spanish again Peso is Spanish so take it forward from here you would find my friends that um, uh, let me tell you a short, uh, short story. Philippines, my friends, was uh, I mentioned a while ago, was run by Spain for a long time between 1568 and 1819. That's 330 years. Now, what you need to understand is this, my friends. Um, it was taken over by America in 1940 in 1898. How did America jump in? Well, um, you know, Spain ran the you know, ruled over the entire South America entire Central America. Entire South America except for Brazil. 
So for about three, four hundred years, you know, Spain ruled South America, except for Brazil, that is ex-Brazil. Uh, Brazil was ruled by Portugal. That's why the main language spoken in Brazil is Portuguese, where the rest of South America and Central America, if you look at South America, Argentina, Chile, Uruguay, Paraguay, Bolivia, Ecuador, Venezuela, Colombia, in all these places, the main language spoken in is Spanish. But, you, you know, and you come up, um, you come up to Central Asia, Central America, you would find uh, Panama, Costa Rica, Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico, you know, Belize, all these countries are Spanish as the main language. Now, you look at further, you look, go up further, and on the west coast of America, Central West America was ruled by Spain. For a long time, Spain ruled this entire area. So today is California, New Mexico, Arizona, all the ruled by Spain. So in 1898, America asked Spain to vacate this place. Spain refused to vacate. So both the countries went to war, America won the war, and America asked for compensation. America not only took money, lots of money, but also asked for overseas, you know, control of overseas Spanish territories. So Spain had to give Philippines in, you know, in reparation, in war in compensation to America. That's how Philippines went into the hands of Americans in 1898. Okay, so in 1946, America gave independence to Philippines and of course, uh, since then it's an independent country. So that's a little about this country. See, this is how we can discuss choices, my friends. This is how we can discuss choices. It's not just there is a choice and we can just, you know, okay, look at the right answer and then we go forward. No, we need to look at the larger picture. That's why in this video talk, we are going to look at a couple of things. We are going to look at, um, you know, we are going to look at um, uh, a lot of questions in terms of the choices, actually. Okay. So I'm not going to discuss all the questions as in this, you know. So, according to the latest uh, Global Terrorism Index produced by the Institute for Economics and Peace, which of the following was the world's deadliest terrorist group for the year 2018? Of course, the answer is Taliban, my friends. Taliban's one of the most dangerous terrorist groups in the world and uh, it controls primarily, it does not have great ambitions of running the world, but it does have ambitions of controlling Afghanistan, where today about 65% of the country's area, geography, not, uh, geography area, is controlled by Taliban. Okay. Um, if you look at uh, Taliban's goal, it's to build, uh, create an Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, where Afghanistan will be ruled only in the name of Islam and in the, according to the Muslim personal law, that is the Sharia. <clears throat> now look at choice two, ISIS, Islamic State. It, for a long time, in fact almost for four or five years, ran Afghanistan, uh, ran large parts of Iraq and Syria, but now it doesn't control much of it. It's been decimated, but um, you know it, it still inspires uh, lone wolf attacks. Lone L O N E, lone wolf W O L F. Lone wolf attacks are those not carried out by individuals, uh, but who are you know, those individuals who are inspired by the radical ideology of the Islamic State. Uh, Khorasan chapter of the Islamic State, of course, said this is an organization. This is where you know Afghanistan, Pakistan, India. You know this is area is Khorasan chapter for these guys. And they want to control India as well. Same code, yeah. Boko Haram is a Nigerian terrorist organization. Uh, Nigeria is the most populous country in Africa, my friends. The southern part is Christian, the northern part is Muslim, and um, the Boko Haram wants to convert the whole of Af you know, whole of Nigeria into the Islamic Emirate and you know run the country as per the Muslim person law. So this is a little about this. Uh, and since we mentioned Nigeria, let me bring in Nigeria. Nigeria, uh, you know, is um, the capital is uh, place called Abuja. A B U J A. Abuja. The largest city, of course, is Lagos. L A G O S. But capital is Abuja. The president is a guy called Muhammadu Buhari. Muhammadu Buhari. Uh, B U H A R I. Buhari. I'm just looking at, um, you know. Um, Question paper, Muhammad Buhari, and then we have the currency as Miara, N I A R A, Miara. Just like you, I also have the handout with me. 
So I, of course, it's there, but sometimes you know I just need to mentally prepare for the next question. So Muhammad Buhari is a president, and the currency is named Niara, N I A R A, Niara, uh, uh, which is of the, as per the same index that we discussed in the previous question that was mentioned in the previous question. Which country was most affected by terrorism? The answer is Syria. So what should you know about Syria? Syria, my friends, is. Um, uh, the capital is Damascus, D A M A S C U S, Damascus. Uh, see, uh, when we come to the answer, both Syria and Afghanistan are right there uh, because there is hardly any difference between these two countries in terms of terrorist violence. But pure a little ahead would be a little ahead of Syria would be Afghanistan. So you could look at Afghanistan as the right answer. But Syria's capital, is, okay, let's discuss Syria. Syria's capital is Damascus, D A M A S C U S, Damascus. It's also the name of a fabric, Damascus. It's a kind of silk, and um, the currency is sorry, the, the, the leader's name is Bashar al Assad. Bashar B A S H A R. Bashar al A L al Assad. E S S A D. Bashar al Assad. And uh, then we have uh, the currency pound. The P O U N D pound. We discussed Afghanistan and Pakistan in the past, so let's bring in Iraq. Iraq, my friends, uh, the capital is Baghdad, B A G H D A D, Baghdad. The capital is Baghdad. And um, the leader's name is, the president's name is Adil, Adil, A D I L, Adil. Abdul, Adil Abdul Mahdi, M A H D I, Mahdi. Adil Abdul Mahdi. <coughs> then the currency is dinar d i n a r dinar okay from here this question on uh, on schedules of the constitution of india so we have uh, schedules of the constitution of india you know uh, i'm looking at um, what should you know by you know for your legal classes on quality and everything you would have known the schedules and everything i just bring this in schedules number 12 okay there are 12 schedules in the constitution of india though at the time of the frame of the, the time <coughs> at the, at the time of inauguration of the constitution of india there were only eight so each of the schedules carries a different idea and uh, just to bring in schedule one uh, just read, let's read the question, then we'll discuss more stuff, extra stuff. The allocation of the seats in the Rajya Sabha to the representatives of states and unit territories in accordance uh, shall be in accordance with the principles of the provisions of fourth schedule, my friends. <coughs> fourth schedule. So, what should you know about this? Uh, each of the schedules, uh, let's start with schedule one. Schedule one carries a list of names of 28 states and nine unit territories. 28 states, nine unit territories. And uh, if you look at Schedule 2, it carries a list of salaries, it just lists salaries of constitutional functionaries. So there is a stable president, you know, salary, vice president salary and all that stuff. But they know what, the vice president does not have a salary. There is no salary paid to the vice president of India. The vice president of India is ex officio chairman of the Rajya Sabha. So as the, as, the, as the chairman of the Rajya Sabha, the person draws a salary, but not as the vice president. And if you look at um, third schedule, it carries oaths, O-A-T-H-S, O-A-T-H-S, oaths of, um, you know, MPs and MLAs. Uh, fourth schedule is the answer there. Uh, Rajya Sabha seats are, you know, divided between states and unit territories. Fifth is about provisions concerning governance of scheduled areas and tribes, uh, scheduled areas and tribes. Uh, um, you know, except in the states of, uh, you know, you have uh, Assam, Tri uh, Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura and Gujarat. So, a lot of these countries, a lot of states in India have tribal populations. Uh, so, there have been, these areas have been marked as scheduled areas. So, for governance of these places, there are special provisions. And schedule 5 talks of all, you know, these provisions, except in the states. Of, these are not be applicable. These provisions shall not be applicable to the states of Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura and Mijara. 
Okay. Now, to take it further, my friends, you know, uh, the sixth provision, sixth schedule talks of the same provisions, but you know, these are applicable to the states of Assam, you know, similar provisions to the applicable to the states of Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura, and uh, uh, Mizoram. So, fifth, to repeat, fifth schedule provisions concerning administration of scheduled areas and tribes, except in the states of Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura, and Mizoram. Sixth schedule. Provisions concerning you know, governance of scheduled areas and tribes in the states of Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura, and Mijanam. Seventh schedule. Seventh schedule talks of division of subjects for lawmaking into three lists Union list, state list, concurrent list. If the subject appears in the union list, only the Parliament of India can make laws for that. If a subject appears in the union in the state list, only the assembly, state legislative assemblies can make laws. But if subject appears in both the parliament as that is in the, in the, the concurrent list, both the parliament uh, as well as the state legislative assemblies can make laws. But as you know, in case of a conflict, only one of these, you know, only the parliamentary law is held supreme. To take an example, you look at the issue of defense. Only the parliament of India is competent to legislate on matters of defense. Law and order is a state subject. On this, only state assemblies can make laws. Education, healthcare are concurrent subjects. Both the center and the states can make laws. But in case of a conflict, only in case of a conflict, only uh, you know uh, the parliamentary law is will be held supreme. From there, eighth schedule, which lists twenty-two scheduled languages, names of twenty-two scheduled languages. Ninth was the first schedule added by you know added to the constitution after it was inaugurated it was inaugurated in 1951 and remember the first, the first amendment added the ninth schedule in 1951 the ninth schedule talks of land reform laws which originally were beyond judicial review but now are they can be subject to judicial review that is they can be challenged in a court of law Tenth schedule is about the anti-defection law, L-A-W, anti-defection law. Anti-defection law is about, um, you know, uh, you know, where an MP or an MLA leaves a parent party and joins another political party. Okay. You often come across these kinds of incidents where an elected you know, representative, an MP or an MLA leaves a parent party and joins another party. This action is called defection. To stop such behavior, in the in 1985, the 52nd Amendment brought in the 10th Amendment. This kind of law empowers the, the Speaker of the House to disqualify, disqualify a defecting MP or MLA. See, but this is rarely used in the right sense. Then, 11th schedule, it talks of Panchayati Raj system, 73rd Amendment, Panchayati Raj system. Uh, Panchayati Raj is a three tier system, three tier, T I E R, tier means level. So there are three levels here the village, you know, Gram Sabha to village level, Mandal or block Samiti, and then Jilla Parishad. So a number of Gram Sabhas make one Mandal or block, and all the blocks make one Jilla Parishad. Now, the 12th schedule is about Nagar Palikas, and this is uh, the 7th to 4th amendment, which talks of the setting up of municipal corporations and you know, uh, what to say, Nagar Palikas. So, to bring in something more here, you know, who is the author of the novel? Keyshot. Keyshot, my friends, is it's pronounced Keyshot, my friends. It's pronounced Keyshot. So, who is the author of the novel? Keyshot. Um, this is a novel that is, uh, uh, you know, that is inspired by, that is inspired by uh, the Spanish novel, the very famous Spanish novel, Don Quixote. Don Quixote, we pronounce this quick sort, but pronounce, typically pronounce Quixote, okay? Q-U-I-X-O-T is pronounced Quixote, but we normally call it quick sort. So, if you would look at uh, who's the author of this book, uh, um, if you look at this, so Salman Rushdie, you must have heard of this man, uh, this great writer Salman Rushdie. So um, Salman Rushdie uh, is considered the most 
popular or rather depending on how you look at it, the famous writer of the English language. But he is con- considered the most controversial writer in the English language today. And um, he is his latest book is Chaotic. See, he won the book. He was born in Bombay in 1947, if I'm not wrong. And you know what? This guy is um, currently started in New York. He was in Britain for a long time. His book, Midnight Children, won the Booker Prize in 1981. As you know, the Booker Prize is given to the best work of fiction in the Commonwealth, uh, you know, published in the English-speaking world. Earlier it was only the Commonwealth, but now uh, Booker Prize is given to the best published, best work of fiction published in the English-speaking world. So, um, if you look at something more here, um, his book uh, won the Booker in 1981, but in 1998, uh, uh, the Booker Committee celebrated its 40th anniversary. 40th anniversary. And at that time, it was decided, it was, you know, a public poll was held. And in the poll, the question was, which do you think was a, is the best book to have won the Booker Prize in the last 40 years? And Midnight Children won the Booker, you know, Booker of the Booker Prize again. Yes. Again, um, in fact, in before that also, in 1993, which was the Silver Jubilee year of the Booker Prize, um, Midnight Children by Salman Rushdie won the best of the Booker Prize. So, I mean, it's considered one of the greatest novels ever written. Now, to take it further, you see the names of these three, Peter Carey, James Codesey, and Market Act Food Movements. These guys uh, are among f- four people. These three are among four people who won the Booker Prize uh, twice. So, who are the guys who won the Booker Prize twice? Uh, these three, and I'll bring in the full name, fourth name in a while. But I would want you to write the names of the two books which have won these guys Booker Prizes. Traditionally, you know, um, the Booker Prize is given only once a year, no, only to one author. Um, but this last year it was given to two authors. We will, before we come to that, let's look at uh, Peter Carey. Peter Carey won the Booker Prize twice, my friends. Once for uh, Oscar and Lucinda. Oscar and Lucinda. L-U-C-I-N-D-A. Lucinda. Oscar and Lucinda. Um, Second one. True History of Kelly Gang. True History of Kelly Gang. G-A-G. Gang. True History of Kelly Gang. history of Kelly Gang. Then we have J.M. Kodji. Ah, Peter Carey is an Australian, my friends. J.M. Kodji was born in South Africa, uh, but he moved to Australia a few years back. So he's also Australian today. He's also an Australian. He won the Booker Prize twice. Uh, once for Life and Times of Michael K. Life and Times of Michael K. The letter K. And the second book is Disgrace. Disgrace. D I S C R A G C E. See, if there are two books you should read, these are the novels. They will tell you a lot, especially the first one will tell you a lot about, um, you know, uh, the, the, the kind of racial discrimination that, uh, that the apartheid system in South Africa, you know, meted out to, you know, uh, blacks and, of course, non whites, um, other non whites. Disgrace is a novel of how the blacks, some of the blacks, vindictive blacks, they got back at the whites actually. So, I mean, fantastic works. Everyone should read. You should read. So, look at Margaret Atwood. Margaret Atwood won the Booker first uh, for her novel, The Blind Assassin. The Blind Assassin. And the second book uh, which got her the Oscar was published last year. So last, she was one of the two prize winners last year. Last year, she won it for The Testament. The Testament. T-E-S-T-A-M-E-N-T. Testament. The Testament. So there is one more author. Hilary Mantle. H-I-L-A-R-Y. Hilary Mantle. M-A-N-T-E-L. Mantle. Hilary Mantle. Hilary Mantle won the Booker for Full Fall. W-O-L-F. Wolf. Hall, H A L F, Wolf Hall, and bring up the bodies. Bring up the bodies. B O D I E S. Bring up the bodies. 
Okay, so that's a little about the book, my friends. Now that we are on the subject, let's bring in last year's winners as well. We mentioned that last year the booker was given to two persons, two authors. One is Margaret Atwood for the book, um, The Testament, and the second one, the second person to have won the Booker Prize was uh, Bernardino Evaristo. You could write this B E R N A R D I N O. Bernardino Everisto E V A R I S T O Bernardino Everisto for the book's name is Girl, comma, Woman, Other Girl, G I R L, Girl, comma, Woman, Other, comma, Other O T H E R, Other. So, two guys there for the now book of winners. From here, we could run. Which country is uh, which state in India has had the highest production of uh, inland fish in you know last year a uh, couple of years back even last year also it's Andhra Pradesh my friends it is Andhra Pradesh and we just look at the chief ministers of these places Andhra Pradesh wherever we find these names of Indian states we look at the chief ministers names in India okay Andhra Pradesh um, sorry Andhra Pradesh is um, uh, the chief minister is Jagan Mohan Reddy why yes Jagan Mohan Reddy Gujarat Vijay Rupani Vijay Rupani Kerala P. Vijayan P. Vijayan Pinarai Vijayan Choice 1 Tamil Nadu E. Palani Swami E. Palani Swami E A L A N I S A sorry S W A M I you could write with an M Y also okay um, this is the Pisca index uh, and uh, this is the Prosperity and Inclusion uh, City Seed and Awards uh, which city got the top spot uh, the answers um, you know the answers uh, Helsinki Zurich oh sorry the choices are Helsinki Zurich Copenhagen Luxembourg the answers Zurich. Where is Zurich? Zurich is in Switzerland, my friends. Considered one of the world's most cosmopolitan cities. Zurich is uh, in Switzerland. So let's look at um, a little about uh, these countries. Uh, Zurich, that is Switzerland, dash. See, Switzerland is probably the only country in the world not to have a capital. Legally, there is no capital. By law, there is no capital. But de facto, generally taken, you know, observed is. Burn, B E R N, burn, B E R N, burn. So, burn, my friends. Um, Switzerland, burn. And um, then there is the president's name, um, you know, Samarga, Samarga, S dot Samarga, S O M M E R U G A, Samarga. The long name Simonetta Samariga. I just cut it short to S dot Samariga. S O M M E R U G A Samariga. The currency is, you know, uh, the currency is um, Swiss franc. F R A N C. Swiss franc. F R A N C. Then we have Helsinki. Helsinki is, uh, you know, uh, the capital of Finland. Finland. The Prime Minister is Sana Marin. Sana, S A N N A. Sana Marin. M A R I N Marin. Sana Marin. And uh, you know the currency is Euro. Euro. E U R Euro. Then we have. Uh, Copenhagen, which is the capital of Denmark. Denmark. Denmark is a tiny country which also owns the autonomous province of Greenland. So Denmark, the currency is the capital is Copenhagen mentioned there. And uh, the Prime Minister's name is Ma Matty Fridrikson. Matty Fridrikson. Matty Fridrikson. 
So, M E T T Matty Friedrichsen F R E D E R I K S E N Friedrichsen. Then we have the capital, the currency, which is Chrome. K R O N E Chrome. The currency is called Chrome. K R O N E. It's a member of the European Union, but doesn't have euro as a currency. It's not a part of the euro actually. So what about Luxembourg, friends? Luxembourg is a tiny country. It's a member of the European Union. Euro is a currency. What's the capital? Luxembourg city. And um, the uh, you know the, the leader's name is Xavier. X A V I E R. Xavier Betten. B E T T E N. Betten. Xavier Betten. Again, um, this is about state governments. Again, some states are mentioned. Which one has worked in I am Ahmedabad, uh, the Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad, to check corruption in its state government departments. The answer is um, Andhra Pradesh. Uh, you know, we just mentioned Andhra Pradesh a while ago. Telangana, Telangana CM is K Chandrasekhar Rao. K Chandrasekhar Rao. Tamil Nadu, we mentioned E. Palani Swami, Uttar Pradesh, Yogi Adityanath. Yogi Adityanath. So, um, one thing about you, uh, Uttar Pradesh is India's most populous state. India's most populous state. That's about 21 crore of India's population. Uh, Andhra Pradesh has the second longest coastline. Second longest coastline. The state with the longest coastline is Gujarat, my friends. Gujarat. Whom the following has been appointed the chairman of the Chiefs of Staff Committee? Uh, well, the, ch the chairman of the defense, Chief of Defense Staff Committee is Bipin Rawat. Bipin Rawat. Bipin Rawat. Choice 1. Uh, look at choice B. Air Chief Marshal has moved. Now it's someone else. Uh, Air Chief Marshal is always the head of the, that is the head of the Indian Air Force is Rakesh Kumar, right? Rakesh Kumar Bhadoria. Rakesh Kumar Bhadoria. B H A D A U R I A. Bhadoria. Um, in the choice, third choice, rather, in choice three, Vice Admiral is mentioned. No, it should be Admiral. Chief of Indian Navy, Karambir Singh. Chief of Indian Navy, Karambir Singh. Then choice four, Lieutenant General is incorrect. It's the Chief of Indian Army, my friends. It's not Lieutenant, it should be General. Um, Army General, that is Chief of Indian Army, Manoj Mukund. Manoj Mukund Naravani. It's mentioned there. Manoj Mukul Naravan. So the Chief of Defense Staff is Bipin Rawat. Then we have Air Chief Marshal Rakesh Kumar Bhadoria. We have Admiral you know, Karambir Singh and Chandra, uh, Chief of Army, Indian Army is Manoj Mukul Naravan. So we have this choices, this question. Yeah, uh, just going through questions. During the Quit India movement, where did Mahatma Gandhi give the call do or die on 8th of August 1942? As you know, it was in Mumbai, it's that is Kranti Maidan, where it was, you know, where the meeting was held. Um, it's in Mumbai. Okay. Uh, remember, 8th August is called uh, the August Kranti Divas. August Kranti or Kranti Divas. Uh, August, what is it called? Quit in Bharat Chodo Divas. Bharat Chodo Divas. Um, on 9th August, uh, see, uh, after Gandhiji gave the call, he was uh, he was imprisoned along with a lot of other political leaders, a lot of freedom fighters. So, who unfurled the flag on 9th August? It was Aruna Asafali, the great freedom fighter. Aruna Asafali, the great freedom fighter, unfurled the flag of uh, you know uh, Tiranga at uh, is it uh, at uh, Mumbai in on 9th August 1942. And uh, you know what? Um, you have these choices here. Uh, anything that you could, yeah, Delhi, Delhi, my friends, is uh, where you have the chief minister, um, 
and in Kejriwal. See, there are nine union territories in India, of which only two have chief ministers, two have legislative bodies and hence chief ministers. One is Delhi, Delhi's chief ministers, as you know, are in Kejriwal. And the other one, other union territory is Pondicherry, where the where uh, the chief minister is V. Narayan Swami. Narayan Swami. Okay, there we go, guys. Uh, okay, now that we mentioned uh, unit territories, let's bring in two more. The two latest unit territories, Jammu Kashmir. Jammu Kashmir's uh, uh, lieutenant governor, that is, well, uh, you know, uh, lieutenant governor is a deputy actually, that the directly of the central government is. Appointed by the central government, uh, though appointment is done with the president on the recommendation of the union government. Um, the JNK lieutenant governor is a person named Grish Chandra Saxena. Grish Chandra Saxena. And uh, if you have written that, then Ladakh. Ladakh's lieutenant governor is Radha Krishna Mathur. Radha Krishna Mathur. So, World Biofuel Day is always observed on the 10th of August, my friends. 10th of August. So, what should you know about this choice here? 9th of August. 9th of August is Hiroshima. Sorry, Nagasaki Day. Nagasaki Day. 9th of August is Nagasaki Day. Also, Quit India Day. Sometimes, 8th August is Quit India Day. Observed like that, celebrated like that. But, 9th August is Hiroshima. Oh, sorry, I'm so sorry. Nagasaki Day. And 6th August is Hiroshima. See, on 6th August 1945, an atomic bomb nicknamed the Little Bomb was dropped by the Americans on the Japanese city of Hiroshima. Three days later, that is on 9th January, 9th August, another atomic bomb, this time nicknamed the Fat Man, was dropped in the city of Nagasaki. And these two incidents hastened the end of the Japanese ambitions in the Second World War. And of course, ever since then, Japan has been, you know, a, you know, Japan has been at the forefront of peace missions around the world. So we have, uh, you know, this question here. From there, we can move to the other ones. You know, uh, which city, which airport in India was selected as the best airport in terms of 5 to 15 million passenger category as judged by the Airport Council International? Cochin, my friends. Cochin. Cochin International Airport. And you know, Cochin is in Kerala. It's in a place called Nedum Baseri. The airport is in a place called Nedum Baseri. Sardar Vallabhai Patel Airport is in uh, Ahmedabad. Tiruvannathapuram, of course, is you know, in Kerala. What you should know more here is this. Uh, that uh, you know, there are two airports in India which are named as women. You know, uh, one is Delhi, which is the, where the airport is called Indira Gandhi International Airport, and then Indore, where the airport is called Devi Ahilya Bai Airport. So, only two airports named after women leaders. Uh, then you have airports like Rajasthan Si, S A N S I, Rajasthan Si, Amritsar, Birsa Munda Airport in Ranchi. Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose Airport in uh, Calcutta. You have Gopinath Bordaloi Airport in uh, Guwahati. You have Chhatrapati Shivaji Airport in Bombay. Kempe Gordon International Airport in Bangalore. Rajiv Gandhi Airport in Hyderabad. And you know, you have a lot of airports spread across the country which are named after eminent leaders. Sometimes these are named after you know local leaders. Like for example, a, a very famous local leader was K. K. Kamaraj, who's then you know who has given his name to the Madras Airport, K. Kamaraja Airport. So from there, of course, which of the following statements are true about census 2021? Almost all of them are true, my friends. All of them are true. So, but you should know that uh, given that coronavirus thing happening around, and why this is the reason why we are having classes like this now. Um, you know, uh, 
we are doing these kinds of classes because we don't want it to miss out on anything. Right? So, um, the works may not be great, but at the end of the day, we at time believe in delivering substance rather than you know all kinds of you know uh, you know gadgetry, gimmickry, and all things. So substance matters, you know. So we are going out of our way to do this because now we can't open our offices, we can't open our studios, we can't you know do anything that would normally bring you a world class presentation. So we, I'm sitting at home and doing this. So are my colleagues here. The time is going out of its way to do things that will help you do well in the exam, help you crack the exam and make it to the best of law colleges. Perhaps. So, uh, you know what, the census work could to a large extent be postponed this year. So, you know, because of the coronavirus thing. So from there, let's go to the Nile River. My friends, the Nile River, as you know, is the longest river in the world. Of course, there is this dispute between, you know, um, you know, geography, between which is the long river. Um, some say Amazon, some say Nile. Well, of course, let's not fight over this. Um, most people agree with Nile is the longest river, but in terms of volume of water, it's Amazon that's pretty big. So Nile River empties itself into the, you know, Mediterranean Sea, my friends. The Mediterranean Sea, how does the name come, you know, how does, I mean, from where does the name come? Um, Medi is middle, Terra is land, E-A-N in the end of the word indicates a water body. So the Greeks believe that between Africa and, and Europe, which to them was the world, you know, this was a water body. This was located, in, in, this was in the middle of two lands. So in, the, in between two lands, it's called Mediterranean Sea. That's how the name comes. If you look at, um, uh, you know, Atlantic Ocean, it's the second biggest ocean in the world. Indian Ocean is the third, and Arabian Sea is an extension sea of the Indian Ocean. It should be called the Indian Ocean, but then they call it the Arabian Sea. And on the other side of uh, the Indian Peninsula, we have eastern side, we have Bay of Bengal. Bay of Bengal, my friends, is, um, you know, it, it, what's a bay? Let me bring in, what's a bay? A bay is a water body surrounded by land of three sides. We have a peninsula which is a land body surrounded by water on three sides. On the other side, you have a bay, B A Y, which is a water body surrounded by land on three sides. If you look at the Bay of Bengal, it's an extension sea, of course, of the Indian Ocean. You will find on its west, of bay, that is, on the west of Bay of Bengal, you have India. On its north, to a large extent, is Bangladesh. On its east, it's Myanmar. That's what it's called, Myanmar. You know, it's a bay. So. Um, which state government has decided to legalize the cultivation of cannabis? Um, see, Madhya Pradesh is the answer, but none has gone forward with this actually. Uh, there are some legal issues concerning this. Uh, Madhya Pradesh is, cheap, is a, Madhya Pradesh is the second biggest state in India by area. It's the biggest, of course, as you know, is Rajasthan at 3.42 lakhs per kilometer. It's the biggest. Second biggest is Madhya Pradesh, 3.08, and the third by area is Maharashtra, 3.07 lakhs per kilometer. The Chief Minister of Madhya Pradesh, well, of course, currently Madhya Pradesh does not have a Chief Minister because Kamal Nath, uh, you know, the, the, the previous Chief Minister President recently for losing majority in the, uh, in the uh, Assembly. We have Chief Minister Nitish Kumar. Nitish Kumar. <clears throat> we mentioned Telangana and Kerala while ago, but you also need to remember that Telangana is the youngest state in India. It was created in 2014, the youngest state in India. Yes. Okay. Um, which the following is not a form of coal. Coal is basically fossil fuel. You know, it's a fossil fuel. It's based on the the, the, dip, the amount of carbon in the coal determines, you know, uh, the, the, the quality of coal. So there are four types of coal depending on the carbon content, anthracite, bituminous, lignite, and peat, uh, which is not a form of coal here. Look at choice four hematite, which is basically um, iron ore. Okay, um, anthracite is the best quality of coal. Second best is bituminous. Third is lignite. Fourth is peat. Peat is typically brown and uh, often used by you know uh, istri and all. Mm -hmm. Press, press guys. <coughs> which the following is the English mountain range. Uh, this is something you would have learned in your school, back at school, back in school, especially in the geography classes. You would have learned that Himalayas are the youngest mountain range and Aravali is among the oldest. While Vindhya and Satpura in this are in the Deccan region and uh, they divide north and from north, you know, north uh, northern parts of India from southern parts. 
Um, so let me bring in Himalayas. The Himalayas, my friends, how do they form? Just to bring in a little here. Um, see, the Earth's built on plates. Plates are large rock masses, my friends. Large rock masses. And, uh, you know, uh, these rock masses are built on semi liquid areas called asthenosphere. It's a gooey kind of thing. You know, gummy, gooey kind of thing. Semi liquid. Asthenosphere. A S T H E N O sphere. S P H E R E. But the word sphere is written with the P but pronounced with an F. Okay? So, asthenosphere. Now, what happens is that, you know, you, know, you have. Uh, this plates on asthenosphere and as you know these are large slabs of rocks uh, there are seven major rocks and major plates and 21 minor plates some say there are 12 major plates you know, but not let's not argue about this um, you know you have the Indian plate the whole of Indian Ocean and India is built on the Indian plate and if you look at the Pacific Ocean the whole of Pacific Ocean is built on, on the Pacific plate then there are some lots of minor plates like you have uh, you know the Sunda plate, Indonesian plate, you know, plenty of uh, small plates. So it is believed that at one point all the entire all different continents were you know were massed into one major continent. So when the plates began to move, the continents began to this place, this land areas began to move away. India was the southern part of Africa, my friends, Madagascar and India were joined. At over 110 million years ago, that's about 11 crore years ago, what happened was India broke up from Africa and began to move north. Okay, it began to move north up, and in the north, uh, there is this Eurasian plate, you know, very large, what is called China and up the area basically, and <coughs> Central Asia. So, between the Eurasian plate and the Indian plate, there was a water body called Tethys, T E T H Y S, Tethys Sea. So, as this Indian plate began to move like this, you know, at some point, basically, the, you know, it ran, you know, ran into the Eurasian plate and all the rocks, basically, the, the underlying rocks, basically, in the Tethys Sea folded up and they created the Himalayas. How do we know that this is the water body? The rocks in the Himalayas are all water body, basically, because on the peaks of these Himalayan mountains, you would find the fossils of marine animals, my friends. Of course, as you know, the fossils would not have, marine animals could not have gone up, basically. So that's how the Himalayas were created about, you know, for, you know, 40 million years ago. So again, geographical age is always a different thing, different organizations, different, uh, different scientists, different measures, actually. Uh, which state in India has the highest uh, number of districts and governments? Which you just look at this. Which state has the highest number of districts? Uttar Pradesh. So that's the answer. Uttar Pradesh's chief minister is Yogi Adityanath. He also has the highest number of Lok Sabha constituencies. That is about 80. The Maharashtra's chief minister is Uddhav Thakare. Uddhav Thakare. Uh, Maha Agadi. Maha Agadi Vikas is the name of the coalition in Maharashtra. Okay. Um, Rajasthan's chief minister Ashok Gehlo. It's uh, he's uh, he's uh, sorry uh, Ashok Gehlo the runs Maharashtra um, Rajasthan and this is India's biggest state by area 3.42 lakh square kilometers. So we have uh, another question here, which is the following organizations launch multi-donor trust fund that focuses on improving the quality of skill development for young people in India. So the answer is World Bank, my friends. The answer is World Bank, but uh, should we not look at all these choices? IMF, uh, head office, Washington DC, Washington DC, International Monetary Fund, Washington DC, Dash, um, head of, uh, the head is Christine Lagarde, Christ, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, my friends. It is Kristalina Georgieva. International Monetary Fund, Washington DC, Kristalina, K-R-I-S-T-A-L-I-N-A, Kristalina, Georgieva, G-E-O-R-G-I-E-V-A, Georgieva, she is from Bulgaria, Bulgaria, okay, then we have choice two, New Development Bank, New Development Bank, in brackets, Nickname BRICS Bank, B R I C S. You know, this is a grouping of five countries. BRICS Bank, five countries are Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. So, BRICS, B R I C S, BRICS Bank. Head office, Shanghai, Shanghai. 
and uh, who is the head K V Kamath K V Kamath K A M A T H I am Ahmedabad Alam ex chairman and CEO of uh, ICIC Bank and ex chairman of Infosys K V Kamath India World Bank head office Washington DC Washington DC president the head is called David Malpass David Malpass M A L P A S S David Malpass David Malpass choice 4 ECB European Central Bank head office Frankfurt 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 German which is in German because what are the word Frank you know uh, Frankie vegetable Frankie and all that vegetable Frankie is uh, you know the word vegetable Frankie chicken Frankie and all that remember the word Frankie comes from the word Frankfurt so the head is called Christine Lagarde Christine Lagarde L-A-G-A-R-D-E Christine Lagarde she's from France she's from France So the following is called the ship builder to the nation. Of course, the answer is two Majigan, Majigan dock ship builders. You know, so I'll bring you. You know, uh, this is uh, look at this choices here. But I would want you to write a little more about this, basically, because uh, this is. Uh, uh, see, there are 12 major ports in India. 12 major ports in India. In the subsequent classes, we'll learn about, a lot about this. See, India is one of the world's largest shipbuilders. Uh, you know, in the past, we were the shipbuilding nation of the world, but of course, things have changed since, um, you know, long. So, I would want you to know that there are 12 major ports in India, six on either coast. Let's look at the sports. We'll look at. We'll start. Uh, see, we'll start in the on the east coast, on the west coast, at the top. Number one, Kandla, K A N D L A, Kandla. I want you to write this, Kandla, dash, Gujarat, dash. Now called, now called, Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay Port, Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay Port. Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay Port. Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay Port. Okay, number two. Jawaharlal Nehru Port Trust. Jawaharlal Nehru Port Trust. JNPT. Jawaharlal Nehru Port Trust, comma, Mumbai. In Mumbai, there is another port. Right. Three. Mumbai Port Trust. MP Mumbai Port Trust. Four. Marmu Goa. Sorry, Marmu Gao. M O R M U G A O. Marmu Gao. Comma Goa. G O A Goa. Next, New Mangaluru. New Mangaluru. M A N G U L U R E. Mangaluru. New Mangaluru. Next, Kochi, oh, Kochi, K-O-C-H-A, Kochi, so we got six, Kanla, two in Mumbai, Marmu Goa, New Mangaluru, Kochi, let's go ahead, take a U-turn, next, Tutikorin, number seven, Tutikorin, T-U-T-I-C-O-R-I-N, Tutikorin, dash, Tamil Nadu, dash, now called, now called, Chidam Barar, Chidam Barar, C H I D A M B A R A R, Chidam Barar, Chidam Barar, Port, P O R T. Next, eighth one, Chennai, Chennai Port. Next, ninth, N O E N N O R E, N O. This is about 34 kilometers north of Chennai. E N N O R E N O dash Tamil Nadu dash now called now called Kamarajar K A M A 
R A J A R कामराजार K A M A R A J A R कामराजार Next um, विशाखापटनम पोर्ट विशाखापटनम पोर्ट Next Paradi P A R A D I P Paradi Paradi Next Haldia Paradi is in Odisha Paradi is in Odisha Next Haldia H A L D I A Haldia or Kolkata or Kolkata So there we go well come my friends um, the National Investigation Agency has hosted the first counterterrorism tabletop exercise uh, for the Quad. What are the Quad? There are four countries in the Quad: U.S., India, Australia, and Japan. And Japan. And Japan. So we could write U.S. Dash Washington D.C. Dash. Of course, you know the name of the president, Donald Trump. Why don't we write the name of the vice president then? Vice president Mike Pence. P.E.N.C.E. -E, Mike Pence. Mike Pence the currency is dollar the currency is dollar Australia Australia is uh, the capital is Canberra C A N B E R R A Canberra dash um, Scott Morrison, Scott Morrison, S C O T T, Scott Morrison, M O R R I S O N, Scott Morrison, dash, Australian dollar, Australian dollar, Australian dollar, next. Uh, Japan, yes, Tokyo, Tokyo, the capital is Tokyo, the Prime Minister's name is Shinjo Abe, Shinjo, S-H-I-N-Z-O, Shinjo Abe, A-B-E, Shinjo Abe, if you've been watching Ninja Hattori, you would know, recall Shinjo, the younger brother of uh, Hattori, hmm? Then in the end, we have the currency of Japan, which is yen, Y-E-N, yen. So all four are part of the you know, quad. Hey, there is a question between, yes. From which country will the Indian Navy acquire MK-45 MOD-4 naval guns? Okay, uh, we are going to acquire them from the US. From the US, my friends, and um, the Prime Minister of Italy is Italy's dash capital, Rome, R O M E Rome. The Prime Minister's name is Giuseppe Con Giuseppe G I E U S E P P E G I E U S E P P E Giuseppe Conti C O N T Conti. As of now, you, the United, the, you know, the Italians have had a very bad, you know, um, heavy, very heavy death toll from coronavirus. Hmm. So, and that's the prime minister. You give some quantity dash. The currency is euro. Euro. The currency is euro. China. You know, Beijing is the capital. B e i j i n g. See, we learn a little more about each of these countries in the classes subsequent to this, but. For now, let's get on with this. China, basic information. Capital is Beijing. The leader's name is, the president's name is Xi. Pronounce Xi, S-H-E, written X-I. X-I, that is Xi. Jinping, J-I-N-P-I-N-G. Jinping, Xi Jinping. Okay. The currency is Renminbi, R-E-N-M-I-N-B-I, to repeat, R-E-N-M-I-N-B-I, Renminbi, 
Yuan, Y U A N, Yuan. The actual name is Renminbi. Yuan is a unit. Germany. Germany's capital is Berlin. And uh, the chancellor's name, they don't have a prime minister, they have a chancellor. Chancellor. Angela, A N G E L A. Angela. We normally pronounce it as Angela, but her name goes like Angela. A N G E L A. Angela. Merkel. M E R K E L. Merkel. Angela Merkel. Angela Merkel. Currency is euro. Currency is euro. So I think um, we just got a couple more questions. Yeah. No, I think three three questions. Which country has uh, India recently approved a MOU for strengthening cooperation in the tourism sector? We have had an agreement with Finland, my friends. Finland, I think we discussed a while ago. Singapore, Singapore's capital is Singapore City. The Prime Minister's name is Lee Sian Lung. L E E Lee Sian H S I E N Sian. Hung, H O O N G, Hung. Li Xian Hung. In some places you will find Li Xian Mung. Not worry too much for proper months. Okay. So the currency is Singapore dollar, of course. And uh, Japan, we know. Thailand, we know about each of these countries. And uh, you know, tiny Singapore receives as many tourists as India does, of course. Thailand receives more tourists than India does. In response to an RTI application, which of the following institutions bodies has for the first time released a list of the top 30 defaulters in the country, willful defaulters in the country, RBI, reference, the Reserve Bank of India. The Reserve Bank of India, you could write RBI, underline that, first point, established 1940, sorry, 1935, established 1934-35. Next, um, nationalized in 1949. Nationalized in 1949. Number three. Um, governor. RBI governor is Kanta Das. Shakti Kanta Das. Shakti Kanta Das. And the head office is in Mumbai. Head office is in Mumbai. Last one. Nickname, nickname, Mint Street, Mint Street. That's the RBI because it's on the located on the Mint Street. Mint is printing, currency printing place. Um, choice four seven. Underline that. Esta first point established nineteen ninety two. Established nineteen ninety two. Second point, regulator of capital and stock markets, regulator of capital and stock markets, head office Mumbai, head office Mumbai, fourth, fourth, uh, the chairman's name is Ajay Tyagi, Ajay Tyagi. Okay. We have black revolution now. We have all kinds of revolutions in this world. So we have this, in this case, black revolution, which is associated with uh, an increase in the production of uh, crude oil. This crude oil. Okay. Fish is blue. Blue revolution. Oil seeds is yellow revolution. Coffee, technically, there is no revolution, but fish, blue, oil seeds, yellow, blue oil, black. We will take two more. Green revolution, food grains, food grains, white revolution, milk production, milk production. Okay, who of the following persons has stopped the fortune business person of the year list? Satya Narayana. Satya Narayana Narayana. He is the CEO of Microsoft, my friends. CEO of Microsoft. So I just want to bring in a little one, one, one there, one point each. 
uh, because the names are already there, we just look at the head offices. These are all the CEOs of the companies that are listed here. Daniel Jank, uh, Alibaba CEO, head office is in Guangzhou. You could write H U A N G Z H O U H U A N G Z H O U Guangzhou. Microsoft, Redmond, comma Washington, Redmond, R E D M O N D, Redmond, comma Washington, Redmond, Washington. Look at Puma. Puma was previously called Ruda. Ruda was started by Rudolf Dassler, and who was the brother of Rudolf Dassler, who started Eldas. But before they started, these two companies, they had their own. The joint firm called Dassler with the Shoe Factory. The brothers split, went their separate ways. Adolf started Addy Das. Addy, his nickname, Das, the first three letters of his surname, Dassler. Addy Das, Ruda, Rudolf Dassler, the guy who started, you know, uh, uh, Ruda, which later became Puma. Puma or Puma is uh, headquartered in Hetzo Generosh. Hetzo Generosh. H E R Z O G E N A U R A U C H. Hatsu Generosh. Some places you will not find a U after G E N A U. After A, you may not find U, but it's okay. Accenture head office is in Dublin, Ireland. Dublin, Ireland. And Julie Smith is the CEO of this. Dublin, Ireland. So that's about it, my friends. I hope you have had fun. My name is Bharat C. Jain. We, we, we kind of we make sure that we, we bring to you a lot of these classes and ensure that you watch each of these and keep learning because, uh, you know, you, you have to focus on learning. You have to make it a, a continuous habit. Read as much as you can. <clears throat> Use all the material that you have. Read newspapers. Spend four minutes on one page of the newspaper. Read all the titles in one minute. Pick one story. Read it for two to three minutes. You will not understand everything. You will not remember everything. Still spend some time. End of those two three minutes after reading the story, you would find that while you might not have understood everything, you might not recall everything, you still will have some basic idea. And that's how we will build up my friends. Okay? Thanks for watching this. Thank you so much.